Yo, what's going on, guys? My name is Chandler, or the Geek Slays, and welcome back to the Scuffed Ass Podcast, episode 125. That's what we're going to go with. I'm recording. I've recorded like four podcasts this week. This is, this is one of them. The title will tell you what it actually is. Don't listen to me. Uh, we're here with the man, the myth, the legend, Big J journalist, Miller Football. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing a lot better after that intro. That was great. <laughs> Big J journalist. <laughs> this is God, the second it. podcast I've been on this week where the guy just gave me the, the most perfect intro possible. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> oh, man. So, so fun. So, I we're going to start this. I want to talk about the team previews you've already published and mm -hmm. maybe the ones you've recorded because, you know, this isn't coming out for at least another week. Right. But we recorded the Vikings one. Which, is it the only one you're going to do where you only have one person on to talk about the team? I have one other scheduled like that, because I've got a buddy of mine who is, like, very, like, he's a massive 49ers fan, but he's vehemently against having on another guest. Because he's like, I don't want to sound stupid in front of another 49ers fan. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. And I'm, I'm basically a closeted 49ers fan at this point anyway, so it works out with how much I love Shanahan. I was going to say, you so, do really love Kyle Shanahan. I really do. I really do. I Those are honestly some of my favorite videos that you make. Not ones where you're actually, like, talking about anything real, but, like, duets where you're... We're on a first date, and you're just rattling off talking about Shanahan's offense. It's so funny. I mean, it's it's just a thing of beauty, you know, the way he incorporated. First of all, not even just Kyle Juszczyk, but, like, the way Trent Williams works in that offense is absolutely beautiful. Because, first of all, that man should not be able to move as fast as he does. It makes absolutely no sense. And second of all, the goofy, like, design, like... I don't know how to explain it, but the way he moves and the way he gets downfield and all the different assignments he has is insane. And the fact that he does not let people look at him is not the best tackle in football, basically. And then obviously, you check. Uh oh. Did my internet just die and I just lost? Being like a crack. Offense is bull. Okay, did my internet just crash, or did his is the question? I don't know what just happened. Oh, no. See, this is why this is, show is called The Scuffed As Podcast. It was my internet. My internet went down. So, I'm going to keep recording, keep talking, keep doing the things, um, and I'm going to let him know real quick that my internet went kaput. Um, I'm going to go ahead and message him real quick. Wild. I'm going to stay in the call, though. Well, or not, actually. Okay. Okay. Now this is just a streamer mode picture. Oh, we're going to... We're gonna, we're gonna just sit here until our Wi-Fi comes back. Uh, sorry for the blank screen, I guess. Um, oh, we got back in. We got back in. Oh God, hello. There you are. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I thought I thought my internet was fucking up. No, you. So I didn't know who was fucking up for a minute. You just started getting real choppy, and I'm like, "Oh, that's weird. Oh, that's okay. not good." And then you just froze. I was like, "Huh? Is it my internet that or his?" Yeah. So I jumped. I just jumped on Google and typed something, and it was like, "Nah, you don't have internet." It's like, "Oh, <laughs> fuck. Okay, but we're back." Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Yeah, you were in the middle of praising. You got done talking about Trent Williams, kind of. 
Yeah, yeah, and then I I just said Kyle Juszczyk is Kyle Juszczyk, you know, it, the the way he does literally everything. Uh, the other day in my Discord, I described it as, like, football porn. It's perfection. I love it so much. And then Debo Samuel, I absolutely love watching everything he's capable of doing and the way he fits into Shanahan's scheming, and he can make an average quarterback like Jimmy Garoppolo, you know, look tolerable and take him to the NFC title game and... You know, it's 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 just beautiful what Shanahan is able to do offensively. And I'm very excited to see what he's going to be able to do with a real quarterback. You know, if Trey Lance can pan out, because so, I feel like his offense is going to be next level. Oh, that's not good. I just dumped coffee everywhere. That's good. <laughs> no, that's really good. That's... Oh, this is what, what the what, like fuck five is minutes show, into this? Man. I'm like five minutes in. <laughs> I'm just over here trying to sit for Kyle Shanahan, and you are falling apart. Dude, I my life is a mess <laughs> constantly, bro. <laughs> I know what clip we're using to promote this episode. It was that right there. I'm, I, I'm just sure my reaction when I did it was just great. I got to go get paper towels at some point. It'll be fine. <laughs> Don't worry, every time I take a drink of coffee, it'll just be dripping down on me. Oh, my. I I really did, though. I really did spill my coffee all over the fucking place. <laughs> you made a face, and I was like, oh, no, you don't like what I said about <laughs> Trey Lance. And then you said, my coffee. And I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say, Kyle Shanahan is the reason Nick Mullins still has a job in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. Like, absolutely. And, uh, God, what was the other guy? Bethard? Yes. Okay. CJ Bethard? Yep. 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 <laughs> Those two still have jobs, and it's just because Shanahan exists. And that's why Jimmy Garoppolo is probably going to get traded to Cleveland to be their savior and win them, like, five games. <laughs> I don't know. Jimmy G might win them more than five. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't roster, know how he's... But... Yeah, it's a good roster, but I don't know what he's going to look like outside of Shanahan's system. That's fine. But I also consider. Nick that... Chubb. I'll, okay, yeah, Nicholas Chubb <laughs> is someone who exists, yeah. but also like Cleveland curse. Valid. All I know is in like two years, we're going to see another one of those big, like, you know, the fake Cleveland jerseys where they have all the names coming down the side. We're just going to have Jimmy Garoppolo crossed off at the bottom again. That That's sure. the result of him getting traded to Cleveland. So, nice. <sighs> Poor Cleveland <laughs> fans, man. They got the yeah. most dysfunctional organization ever. Just so brain dead. I get Baker isn't as talented as Deshaun, but like, come on. I also still love that on the day of Deshaun's first disciplinary hearing from the NFL, Baker Mayfield's hosting a quarterback camp. Do, you know, work. Really? Yeah. So, I missed that. Yeah. So. The Browns, who wanted an adult at QB, their quarterback was at a disciplinary hearing while Baker Mayfield was teaching kids how to play quarterback. Common Cleveland L. Right, honestly. dude? Like, I get it. <laughs> Baker was a jackass six years ago in college, but we also got to remember that was six to eight years ago in college. Yeah. He got drunk and ran from the cops one time. So he got disorderly conduct. Like, that's, I'm okay with some of that, you know? Yeah, what college kid hasn't? Right? <laughs> right? Like, He's just dumb enough to get caught. That's the issue. Yeah. yeah. I mean, knowing Baker, he was probably being a little bit cocky with it. That's probably the only reason why he got caught. Honestly. But, like, he was probably taunting the fucking cops. <laughs> <laughs> I can totally see that. I can, I can totally see There's that. There's a video of it. Somewhere. So there's a video. I How have I not so, seen yeah. this video? I don't know, man. Because you were like 12 at the time. I don't know. <laughs> Would have been 13. Thank you very much. <laughs> sorry, Six sorry. years ago. <laughs> sorry. I was still following the NFL then, but I wasn't col following college football. So I guess that would make sense. And were you following Baker Mayfield's career trajectory? I'm pretty sure he was still the backup <laughs> quarterback. I, I definitely was not. But I'm surprised I didn't see it like resurface when he got attention, which I'm sure it did. But I don't know how I didn't see it. Maybe it was back in your weird, you know, you talk about it publicly, so I'm allowed to talk about it. Your weird, like, super political days. 
Maybe. Where you I don't were, know. you know, just retweeting fucking. Yeah. God damn it. What's that idiot's name? Ben Shapiro. Thank you. I, I really. Yeah. I actually forgot his name. Yeah. Like the dude with the weird voice. I can't voice, forget his name. He just... I can't forget his name. He is ingrained in the back of my mind as like my worst personality trait. <laughs> From fucking, what would that be now? Three, four years ago? Maybe even more recent? Nah. It, it definitely wouldn't be more recent than three years ago. I sure hope not. I, Fuck. That was a dark time. Before it's the a dark, dark, dark time. Before the Empire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what do you think of Kenobi? I thought it was fucking incredible. Thank you. I thought it was amazing. I don't understand why anyone is upset with it. Because Revo's actor is bad. She was great. She was the perfect villain no, no. for that show. Horrible she villain, was... terribly written, terrible actor, yeah. terrible visuals, terrible. It's Star Wars. It's right, bad. right, right. Yeah. No, I thought I loved the idea that she and I didn't pick up on it until I saw someone point it out. But the fact that she was like very similar to Anakin being like the main antagonist of the show was perfect writing. That was fantastic. Like, and, you know, like I said, once it got pointed out to me, I was like, oh, shit, okay. And then I started to, you know, connect the dots. She's very arrogant. She's very uh, emotion-based. She doesn't think things through. She thinks she's the shit. Well, that goes with being arrogant. Like, yeah, she, she is Anakin Skywalker to a T. And now here she is, the bad guy, trying to overthrow Anakin Skywalker. And then she gets fucked because Darth Vader is Darth Vader. And God, was he fucking amazing oh in the God. show. Oh, my God. Showing Vader's power was just incredible. And mm -hmm. speaking of episode five, where he, you know, kicks the shit out of Reva, and we get the first ever actual... Ah, see, I can't say that, because I guess Rey and Kylo did it in episode nine. The holding the a ship. ship? No. Oh, the holding, the holding a ship, a ship. Okay. down. Okay, okay. Yeah. But it's a little different, but... Because the... Sh yeah, whatever. Um, but I don't get everybody was like, well, he just ripped the first ship out of the sky. Why did he just watch the second one go? It's like, they've literally told you why the entire episode, the flashbacks are them telling you why. Come on. Media literacy. Yeah. It's not that hard. Just yeah. see what's going on yeah. on screen and then just process it just a little. Mm -hmm. Like... Fuck. And the flashbacks were done so well. Like, but, the fact that it was just one scene with Anakin and Kenobi going back and forth instead of it being like, oh, here's 15 different scenes of them in the Clone Wars, and also here's Satine, and also here's Ahsoka, and also here's Cody. Like, you don't need all that shit. No. The fact that it was just one scene of the two of them training to perfectly show their personalities differing was fantastic, in my opinion. So... Speaking of that scene, first of all, I got to continue to play the role of every Star Wars fan. That scene was awful because Anakin didn't look 12 anymore. He looked in his 40s, right. kind of. Just like right. the flashbacks for Order 66, he didn't have long hair, so not the same character. It's like, dude, go watch the Order 66 scene when it originally happens. His hood's up. You can't tell he has any fucking hair. What mm -hmm. is this complaint? But um, the training scenes, the thing I loved is you still get the unreliable narrator aspect. Watch the scene again. There are no ships on Coruscant for some reason. Not a, There's yeah. like one ship in the sky at all. So you can 100% see that it's a memory because it's solely focused on the two. It's not like an actual yeah. like flashback where we are seeing what truly happened we're getting their memory of it which mm -hmm. is super sick because obi-wan calls it out in the episode and obi-wan and anakin have the same flaw all they see is each other nothing else mattered all they could see obi-wan could only see anakin anakin could only see obi-wan and it was fantastic mm -hmm. uh I, it was such a good show it was and I, then I may or may not have cried know. in episode six. I did. I bawled my <laughs> fucking eyes out. Oh, Straight yeah. up. Dude, yeah, that it... scene hit too hard. Mm -hmm. 
And then I actually like two scenes hit too um, hard, but we'll get there. Yeah. (laughs) One of, I mean, I don't know which scene you're referring to is like the original and the other one, but like one of my favorite callbacks, so to speak, in that entire show was when Obi-Wan fucked up half of Vader's mask and it was the half that Ahsoka hadn't fucked up. Yeah. And then, you know, you have the, the symbolism of Luke taking off both halves. Right. Which is so could fucking pull half, cool. Obi-Wan could yeah. pull half, but only yeah. Luke could have taken the mask all the way off. Yeah, which was so fucking cool. That was such great fucking... It was what, so what's good. The word and what's the symbolism. That's the word yeah, I'm looking and for. And their use of the lighting there. Yeah. Right? When Obi-Wan's pleading Anakin, and, you know, his face goes blue, and his eyes, if you actually zoom in, his eyes go blue. Mm-hmm. He 100% Anakin Skywalker was back for like five seconds just to tell Obi-Wan it's not his fault, which mm. is just the, oh, it hurt me. Yeah. All of it hurt me. I'm so sorry for all of yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, and then the, the I killed Anakin Skywalker line going oh off my of God. that makes the, the line smirk. from New Hope oh. make sense more. Oh, yeah, yeah it 100% does. And that exact scene also helps the line from uh, Return of the Jedi. Obi-Wan once thought as you did. You were, you were right. Oh, my God. Did my internet fucking crash again? Nodding along and listening. Oh? Oh, you're nodding along and listening. I think you're good. I think you're good. Are we coming back? There yeah, is a yeah, really yeah. bad storm outside, so... Uh, like bad apparently so it's not great but yeah the the line from return of the jedi the obi-wan once thought as you did about him still having good in him we Mm -hmm. see obi-wan did still think that until that very moment Mm -hmm. like it tied it together again i loved it Mm -hmm. i loved it Something I just thought about is what people were reading at Vader fighting because, you know, the line, I can't remember the exact line, but he's like, you know, talking about how long it's getting to fight him again. And then he fought <laughs> him again. Yeah. It was how badly Vader wanted to get one over him, how badly Vader wanted to defeat him, and yep. then he finally got to. Yep. That, I don't know, and that scene as a whole, I think it's on par with the, with the fight scene from Revenge yeah. of the Sith, which is insane to say. I never thought I'd see the day where a Star Wars fight scene lived up to that, but, like, dude, I might be better. Dude, I just loved Vader getting the high ground, and instead <laughs> of using it to win... Literally giving it to Obi Wan by throwing it at him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you got the high ground, yes. Then what? I gave it to him. <laughs> 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 it makes no sense. It's so good. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I also saw Mesa Windu, who I know you know. He's going to be on your team previews, I believe. Oh, hopefully, right? hopefully. I mean, he told me to DM him, and he hasn't DM me back. So. Ah, that'll happen. But yeah. He made a tweet the other day talking about the weird love for George Lucas right now that Mm -hmm. didn't exist when Star Wars got sold. Everybody's like, I wish from the beginning it would have been George Lucas. It's like, except for it's you're the same guy who was literally saying, oh, J.J. Abrams is going to do better than George Lucas ever did. J.J. knows Star Wars. It's like... (laughs) And now suddenly everybody hates him. It's hilarious because it's Star yeah. Wars. No one hates Star Wars more than Star Wars fans. Yeah. When it comes to people writing and directing movies, I genuinely think the best person who's ever going to write or direct a Star Wars movie hasn't done it yet. Because I am so, so excited for Taika's Star Wars movie. Oh. It's going to be so fucking good. I'm going to get hate for this. I'm excited for Ryan Johnson's trilogy, man. Ryan yeah, Johnson's a good-ass director, and it's not going to be this weird, he gets the middle movie between two other directors. Mm-hmm. No, no. Right. He gets his own shit. He gets to tell his own story, and I'm so hyped. Yeah. It's going to be so yeah. good. 
forgot that was happening. I forgot he was getting his own trilogy, but I'm excited for that as well. I like Ryan Johnson, but I I do I am way more excited for Taika if I'm being totally Fair honest because Taika's just I don't know I like his style. I like the humor he's Valid. able to incorporate, and you know even though it's Star Wars, you can have a little bit of humor, you can have that little bit of doofiness, and I think Taika does that kind of stuff very very well. And we've seen him handle space stuff already with Ragnarok and. Uh, love and thunder that's coming out soon you know we've seen him handle like korg and you know all the other aliens and shit and his movie if i'm not mistaken is taking place like outside of the whole skywalker storyline it's like a standalone type thing just to expand the star wars universe which makes it even cooler because he can basically do whatever the hell he wants with it which is going to be so amazing oh it's gonna be so good mm -hmm. um so I'm just scrolling through the things I've liked on Twitter recently because I've been liking a lot of Star Wars content. And this joke mm -hmm. is, it's not a joke, but the prequel, r slash prequel memes Twitter page tweeted mm -hmm. out this picture. It's like the dialogue George Lucas keeps in his movies. And it shows the I don't like sand scene. And then it goes, the dialogue George Lucas cuts. It's a deleted scene this. from Revenge of the yep. Sith when Obi-Wan visits Padme. Like, mm -hmm. dude, how do you cut, like, the best line in the movie? But also, they cut out, like, the biggest story, like, the biggest plot for Revenge of the Sith for some reason. Palpatine manipulating Anakin into thinking Obi-Wan and Padme are, like, screwing around behind his back. That's, that was the thing? That was supposed to be what was going on. That's why the, that. that's why Obi Wan showing up on Padme's ship caused Anakin to flip his shit. Oh, because okay. to him, everything Palpatine's been saying got confirmed. Right. That's why right. it was over in that second. Because four minutes before that in the movie, we just saw Anakin hoping he didn't have to kill Obi Wan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now he's killing Padme and Obi Wan. It's like we missed a step here. Because we did. Yeah. Because we did. I didn't know that. That makes yeah. a lot more sense. But to me, I always just assumed Anakin was pissed that Obi-Wan showed up to try to stop him. And was like, yeah, you know, I didn't want to kill you, but you're here, so fuck you. You right. know? But no, it was... Yeah. <laughs> okay, I mean, yeah, that makes a lot more sense, honestly. Um, uh, I will say, though, and this is kind of my Star Wars hot take, I don't like Sand Thing is beautifully written, oh, it's, and I will I die it. on that I hill. I love it so much. And I don't it mean is, from a joking standpoint. I mean, oh. legitimately, it's beautifully written. I don't know about that, but I do I, I do love that scene. Yeah. Not just as I mean, a meme. Yeah, like, I just enjoy it. Yeah. But, yeah, and I mean, the dialogue's goofy, but when you consider everything going into Anakin and his personality and his upbringing, it makes a lot of sense. Oh, it really does. At first, yeah, like, the kid was taken at an age where he was already developing, like, you know, not quite hitting puberty, but, like, understanding that girls exist and, like, he's gonna do things and get married one day, but he never got the chance to learn how to express that. So and he's just, like... Hey, Padme, you're the complete opposite of my least favorite thing in the world, which means I like you a lot. Right. Because he was never taught to express his feelings and stuff. And, and I, I also got to say this. He was a slave on Tatooine. How much yeah. schooling do you think he had? Mm -hmm. Bro probably yeah. doesn't know how to read. Yeah. Like, let's be real. Yeah. yeah. I mean, come on. 100%. Like, he was a slave on Tatooine. He's not... Mm -hmm. This, I don't know, like... Yeah. So yeah. On top of that, you know, he's being taught that he can't have these personal attachments and having feelings for Padme is wrong and it's bad, and he's still, like, defying them to try to go and do it anyways. Like, I don't know, I just think... First, I think his dialogue is fine because he's, like, in that awkward stage of his life anyways, despite... Every, or even with everything else going on. So him having goofy dialogue throughout Revenge of the Sith and Attack of the Clones makes sense. Yeah. And then, especially when it comes to expressing his feelings, having no idea how to do it makes a lot of sense. And I think that scene, like I said, people like to clown on it. I don't think it's warranted. I think it's actually beautifully written when you think about the character. For sure. And I, I don't know. I, I think the whole Jedi and attachment thing gets... I don't think people actually get what they mean. The problem isn't having feelings and loving someone. 
if that was no Jedi would be a Jedi. I mean, did Obi-Wan break the Jedi code because he loved Anakin? No. The, yeah. The I actual, like, hardcore attachment part is the issue the Jedi have because it causes you to be Anakin. He could not lose Padme. He right. couldn't. Whereas right. Obi-Wan, it hurt, but he could let go of Anakin. He could let go yeah. of whoever, Satine, Qui-Gon, yeah. all of these people. Anakin, mm -hmm. that's the part that I think people are missing the nuance there. Because mm -hmm. it's like, it's not that you're for... He, Anakin literally said it is the other big issue. We're not forbidden to love. Mm -hmm. You're not. Yeah. But you're forbidden from being that attached. Yeah. To where you're that, gonna go Darth Vader because somebody might right. die. And that's what I was kinda getting at. I don't I don't mean like sure. Anakin physically did not believe he was not allowed to love Padme, but he knew how strongly he felt about Padme right. would be frowned upon. Yeah. So he's trying to I don't I guess like express it kind of, but not fully because if he did it fully, there would be a good chance that like Padme could go route him out to the council or whatever the fuck and start a whole other thing. I don't know. I just, I just think Anakin Skywalker is, in my opinion, at least the most well written character and most tragic character in like all of fiction. Dude, I love Anakin. Maybe, yeah. He's not my favorite Star Wars character of all time, but like I, I just think his story and his existence is just fantastic and his downfall is some of the Tragic. most heartbreaking literature i've ever read or heard or watched or whatever you want to call it he's just so so fucking amazing right i i don't know it almost seems like he is what every person would be mm -hmm. like do whatever it takes to protect the people you care about and to be fair it's not like it was just his decision to go be an evil monster. He was manipulated into becoming mm -hmm. that. He didn't ask to be that. Right. But another thing I just found that the official Star Wars Twitter account at least replied to. I don't know what else happened. Okay. But it, the tweet itself says, friendly reminder that Obi-Wan wished Darth Maul had killed him on Naboo when he saw the security recordings of Anakin. And then they posted the actual script where he was, th like, what was going through Obi-Wan's head at that moment. So it's like Obi-Wan staring, wishing he had the strength to rip his eyes out of the head. Out of his head, Jesus. But even blind, he would see this forever. He would see his friend, his student, his brother turn and kneel in front of a black cloaked Lord of the Sith. His head rang with a silent scream. The traitors have been destroyed, Lord Sidious, and the archives are secured. Our ancient holocrons are again in the hands of the Sith. Uh, so it continues with that conversation. And then, fumbling nervously, Obi-Wan somehow managed to shut down the holoscan. He leaned on the console, but his arms were not supporting him. They buckled and he twisted to the floor. He huddled against the console, blind with pain. Yoda was as sympathetic as the... We, that's a weird way to describe that. And I also don't know how to say that word. The trees on Kashyyyk. He, he was okay. as sympathetic as the roots of that tree, which weird. Warned you were. Obi, and then Obi-Wan said, I should have let them shoot me. What? No. That was already too late. It was already too late at Geonosis. The Zabrak on Naboo. I should have died there before I ever brought him here. <laughs> and that got cut? Yeah. Dude. Oh. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Holy shit. Every time I read that it just hits so hard. Oh my god. I should have died there before I ever brought him here is just Whew. fucking Yoda. Jesus Christ, that cold motherfucker. No, Obi-Wan Obi said that. No, 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 no. When he said warned you were. Oh, he's... that's cold. I that's mean, that's a cold fucking line. That's also true though. He literally yeah, said if you watch that recording, only pain you will find. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. 
that's that's such a cold, cold fucking line. My God. And then the official Star Wars account tweeting out a picture from Clone Wars that just said alternate universe. Satine said the word, and then the picture is Obi Wan during that speech. Had you said the word, I would have left the Jedi Order. It's like now I want a Star Wars what if show so bad. Like, why have they not made one yet? I don't why know. is that not a thing? It, it needs they, they to be. Least, yeah, because there's so many good what ifs. Right? What if Obi Wan so had died good. on Naboo instead of Qui Gon? Mm hmm. I think there's two you could do with Anakin. One that leads to Qui Gon training him. One that leads to mm -hmm. Mace Windu training him. Because either way, I don't Ooh. think he turns dark. Yeah. yeah. I just don't. I'd also like, what if Obi Wan killed Anakin on Mustafar to see how that would kind of I think, transcend? So, I I hate talking about it because I don't like the dude. Star Wars theories. Yeah, video. but yeah. Star Wars theory. Back when he did just the theory, like the what mm -hmm. if videos, I enjoyed those. The dude yeah. now just kind of spreads hate for no reason, and mm -hmm. it annoys me. But yeah. back then, his what if Anakin defeated Obi Wan. And even the Revenge of the Sith game, the video game that was on, like, PS3, mm -hmm. did that as well, where Anakin kills Obi-Wan and then, like, immediately says, fuck this, I'm ruling it all, and goes and kills Palpatine. <laughs> right. Like, I want to see that one. What does the galaxy yeah. look like if Anakin runs everything? Yeah, that would be awesome. Like, ooh. It's... And also, just because Disney fucked us out of, like, what would have been one of the coolest power couples, just just give us a nod to, like, what if Finn and Poe were gay. Sure. J just just because. Like, that, just, just that would have been... Yeah, just for fun. Because, like, it, it, it would have been perfect. You know, like, it would have been... They, they were meant to be together, and it pisses me off so bad. Like, I could go on a 40-minute rant about how bad they fucked Finn. I was going like, to say, the thing that bothers that, me more is yeah. what they did to Finn alone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> But I'm just saying, like, at least give us a little nod to it, you know. Do something with it. I don't know. I gotta Fuck. send you this tweet. It. We don't oh, actually man. have to talk about it. It's just amazing. Okay. <laughs> so good. Here you go. Maybe it'll take an hour to send. Give it a second. There you go. No, it's here. I got it. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Aiden Christensen's seven-year-old daughter was his training partner for Obi-Wan I did see him talking about that on some late night show the other day but I didn't even think about it like that yeah <laughs> oh god did you see the kid on TikTok the kid who played the I don't know what his name is I'm not that weird young the, the main but young the youngling that, like, yeah. yeah yeah the master Skywalker there are too many of them what are we going to do Mm -hmm. Apparently he and Hayden met up just a little, just like during the filming of this. And he was like, I was trying to think of something cool to say. And I just said, Master Skywalker, there's too many of them. What are we going to do? And apparently Hayden Christensen's reply was, oh, so you survived. <laughs> like, I just love Hayden Christensen so much. Oh, my favorite person. Uh oh, okay. And people people bitch about it. He gets way too much hate. He gets way too much shit. He Him always and did. The, yeah, the kid who played young Anakin got oh, a lot of shit dude, too for no reason. Did he get bullied out of acting ruined. completely? Yeah, bullied not only out of acting, but bullied so bad he developed schizophrenia. Really? Yeah, like dude's life got oh. ruined by Star Wars fans it's existing. Awful. Yeah did that to the guy who played Jar Jar Binks too. He almost killed himself. Yep. He almost and, jumped off the Brooklyn Bridge. Well, and I mean, look at Daisy Ridley has not had jobs since Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And she's such a talented actress. They all, so everyone good. in the sequels were so amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to not like the story, that's fine. But when you don't like the story, you don't have to attack the actors who just yeah. said the words they were handed yeah exactly like, yeah and i'm not saying go attack the writers either like no that's not my point you gotta give them someone to attack but no <laughs> i don't if you I hate you star wars so go much go someone. fuck yourself and stop watching like yeah. for fuck's sake yeah. i yeah i'm also really annoyed at the people 
We want a second season just so we can see the Obi-Wan Darth Maul fight in live action. No. I'm putting my foot down. No. I never want that redone. You cannot take something that was done perfectly, but it was in animation. I don't give a fuck. It was done beautifully. You don't try again. Yeah. You got a 10 out of 10. You don't go, I want to see if I can get an 11 out of 10. Bitch, that's not possible. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> and besides, animation's the best part of Star Wars. I, I wholeheartedly believe that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Clone War. I'm not so big on Rebels, but Clone Wars is by far the best part of Star Wars, in my opinion. And Rebels Easily. even had some scenes that yeah, were just... Yeah, absolutely. The, the Obi-Wan Maul fight was just great. Ahsoka, Ahsoka and Vader. Vader. Yep. Kanan and him, you know, holding back the blast to save the rest of the group. Yeah. Kanan revealing was he was a Jedi. I love... Kanan oh, yeah. is the only, like, main character yeah. from Rebels that I... Mm. I liked, um... What's the Hera? Is that her name? The, His girlfriend? Kanan's girlfriend, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it's Hera. I liked her too. But I, I'm not a big fan of Ezra. I didn't like No. The Sabine big dude. was okay. Sabine was alright. And, and I can't we're getting her in Ahsoka. So. Zeb. Yeah. Zeb. Zeb. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of him. No. I just personally was not a fan. And Chopper was just like R2 D2 without morals. So he was like R2 D2, but really him. fucking annoying. Yeah. Isn't there a, a scene in that show where they fight? Isn't that a thing? Not R. Maybe I don't know. I think he fights R. He fights some droid. I thought yeah. it was R two. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And then the whole arc where they come across Rex and yeah, yep. I can't remember the other two with him. Uh, Wolf and Gregor. Yeah. Yeah. Rex, Wolf, and Gregor. That's great. Love oh, that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Seeing a Jedi try Rex to be near them. Because, I mean, that would be impossibly hard. Mm -hmm. Ahsoka said to trust him. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Last yeah. time I saw one of these motherfuckers, they killed my master and tried to murder me. Mm -hmm. Like, nah, dude, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. And I love that scene, because Rex is my favorite character in all of Star Wars, easily. Yeah. Like, with, without a doubt, no question about it. It was Anakin when I first got back into it, but, like, after I rewatched The Clone Wars, Rex stole everything and him in that arc where he's just his old badass self even as an old decrepit clone and then just to lead into him ending up joining the resistance and fighting on endor and shit is so cool yeah such a important and awesome part of star wars shit i mean the clone wars is the reason anakin cemented himself as my favorite character because you got so much extra development you truly saw, because I mean, movies are only so long. You can only get so much of the story in there. So you got to truly see every step he took towards the dark. It wasn't this, I don't know, literally five minutes ago, Obi-Wan was saying he was a better Jedi than him. And now he's murdering children. Like that's, we took a big I... leap here. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. But like, the Clone Wars showing you all of it, and I don't know if there's a better piece of Star Wars media than the Mortis arc. The, proving Anakin's the chosen one for all the idiots in the back who thought Disney was changing that. And then almost having him turn to Vader, like, in that moment, yeah. trying to stop himself from turning to Vader. And then, oh, the sadness that hits you when you rewatch that episode, and Obi-Wan says... Everything will be fine as long as we all stick together. They didn't stick together, so nothing's fine. Like, huh. Ah, yeah. uh, sadness. Yeah. <laughs> and then going along with that, you go to season seven and you see Ahsoka come back and how excited Anakin is just for her to be like, I don't have time for this right now. And then she dips and that's the last time they see each other as Master and Padawan or as like friends even yep. because the next time she sees him as Vader. Oh, it's just so sad. So sad. And then, In fact, that... Anakin kept her lightsabers, bro. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. And then the 501st with the Ahsoka oh, face paint man. was fucking beautiful. Awesome. I love that. But I think the saddest moment in that entire show does come in season seven. And it's when Rex is telling Ahsoka, like, they don't give a shit anymore. We got to fucking kill them all or else we're going to die with them. And she just slowly pops off his helmet and he's crying and, like, tries to hide away from her. 
I've never sobbed harder watching a cartoon in my entire it life was, oh, than in that dude. moment. Clone Wars was just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the fact that all of these diverse characters with huge personalities were all voiced by one fucking dude. Right? Doing the same voice, but in slightly different, like, tones and different vibes with it is so incredible. It was. Dee Bradley Baker might be the best voice actor of all time just from that show. That's Because, eh, like, that's literally... Fair. May, I, maybe that's over exaggerating a little bit, but that might be the best role a voice actor has ever oh, had, even 100%. though it was like 150 roles or whatever. Right. Because even going back and watching it, someone will be talking off screen, you'll be like, that's Rex, even though it's just generic Australian right. accent number 42. Like, right. it's insane to me how well he was able to do that. Each clone has their own distinct voice, own distinct tone, own distinct way of saying things, own distinct way of doing things. They took literal clones of a fucking one-off character in the prequel trilogy and made them into like 80 fleshed out beloved characters. Yep. It's insanity that they were able to pull that off. And that's why Dave Filoni is like the best part of Star Wars when it comes that, to and like, working behind the scenes. I love when he does interviews. Dave, yeah. I know you're going to see this, obviously. Hit me up. Let's get you on the show. <laughs> gotta, gotta give it a shot. Um, but like, no, I'm gonna shoot Dave Filoni a DM after this, and he's gonna respond. Do it in. I'll ruin your career. <laughs> no, um, but like the the interview we did talking specifically about the Phantom Menace and why the fight at the end is called the duel of the fates and him talking about, you know, it, it is entirely, this duel is deciding the fate of this child. If Qui-Gon Jinn wins, he even said right there, Anakin never turns to the dark side. Darth Vader never exists. If Qui-Gon wins, if Darth Maul won or defeated Qui-Gon at the bare minimum, which is what we got, that, that's what causes Anakin to turn. It all stems from there. That was the duel of this boy's fate. And mm -hmm. oh my God. That, it, it's like every time I see Dave Filoni just expanding on work he's either done like for the Clone Wars or in the movies or just talking about the lore. It's like, God damn. This dude either confirms what you already believed or tells you something that you would have never dreamed of thinking about and it's just amazing yeah it's i don't think you know other than like obviously stanley when he was alive i don't think there's a single person out there working on these like lack of better words nerd franchises that cares more about them than dave filoni i don't think so like that maybe man. kevin feige maybe I listen. I love Marvel. I love Feige. I don't think he. I don't think he cares much as, like I about said, it as maybe, much as Filoni. But yeah, Filoni is just a whole other level when so it comes to I, this shit. I, I actually think the person closest might be Favreau, John Favreau. I would agree with who that. who does Marvel and Star Wars. But like, I love John every Favreau. project he works on, you can tell that yeah. he was one of the people working on it. Mm -hmm. And even beyond Marvel and Star Wars, like, he's such a good actor outside of that. He, John Favreau is such a fucking wonderful human. I, I love him to death. But yeah, Filoni is on a whole other level when it, when it comes to, to, like you said, expanding on the lore and giving you new ideas and confirming your theories and things right. like that. And even, you know, when he's working on his own shit, like The Mandalorian was incredible. The Book of Boba Fett was great. I'm he's still done. annoyed about The Mandalorian. What part of it? The leaked behind-the-scenes stuff where they filmed it as Plo Koon being the one to show up to get Grogu instead of Luke. I didn't and know that. That's what they told everyone in the cast. Nobody knew it was Luke Skywalker. It was Plo Koon. Because if it leaked, everyone would think it was Plo, and instead Luke would show up and everybody would be like, ah! But it's like, dude, I, Plo Koon, bro, come on. Come, come on. I love Play Plo with Koon. our emotions like that. I love but, Plo Koon, too. <laughs> Literally, I admittedly, I'm not too deep into like the Plo, Plo Koon lore, 
sure. that one scene of him in the ship and he's like we're meant to be expendable sir and he goes not to me that's like yes i love yes, that that's that... fucking amazing fantastic writing fantastic moment i'm obsessed with the clones and him caring about the clones like that is yep. just amazing that and the scene also from the clone wars when ahsoka's missing and he's talking to anakin oh mm -hmm. my god it's like dude Blo Koon's an awesome dude also yeah. old as fuck well at yeah. least in legends i don't know what it turned out to be i always pictured so Plo far, Koon, if but... he was a person would just be like a chill old scrawny dude with a big ass beard chilling in the corner yeah that doesn't talk but when he does everyone shuts the fuck up and listens pretty much yeah i love Plo Koon. he's oh, such a great character and... The best part about Plo Koon is the fact that it, this is still canon will always make me happy. Ty Vaka was his Jedi Master, a fucking Wookiee. That's oh. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I believe it's also like Chewbacca's like uncle or something weird. That's cool. So like connections. But okay. yeah, I've always loved Plo Koon. He's so cool. And then his power that i actually don't know if it's canon or not it force might be lightning, legends, right but like a force like a judgment. type of it yeah force judgment yep right so okay. cool such cool power yeah because force lightning is just it's purely thick, dark right? side yeah okay yeah. you can See, only not... do that by drawing on the dark side whereas okay Plo Koon figured out how to do some form of it without drawing on the dark side which is awesome is he the only one that can do it uh, the only other character that I know of that ever has is Luke. And his was so, far more powerful. But Luke okay, in so Legends was also... discovered it. Yeah. And then Luke... Okay. But, I admittedly don't know jack shit about Legends. I, yeah. I do not know a whole lot. I used um, to I read a lot of books. Fair enough. My favorite thing that I know about Legends is that Jar Jar Binks' dad tried to kill himself because he hated Jar Jar so much, which I think is the fucking funniest thing in the world. You know what <laughs> happens to Jar Jar? Doesn't he become like an old peddler and like... Yeah, he's does... like a street like, clown. Street performer. Yeah, and yeah. like everyone hates him because yeah. he's the reason the Empire exists. Because he <laughs> is the one in episode two who gives yeah, but... emergency powers to the Supreme Chancellor. Yeah. So, like, He's everybody still... blames him for everything that happened, and it's just sad. Yeah, I'm still mad they cut the idea of Anakin killing him in the temple. <laughs> because I think... Because he was literally just supposed to run by and just slice him and keep going. It wasn't supposed to be a long, drawn-out scene. Just real quick, cut Jar Jar and keep going. <laughs> no, it, it needs to be a little slower than that. Annie? And then, ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would have just, been even better. Uh, just be a dick about it. It would have been great. <laughs> oh, give him even little. Give him a little bit more. Be like, Misa's so worried about you, and then just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awful, but yes. Uh, I mean, it's better than him turning into be like a sad old fucking oh basically. God, yeah. I don't want to say hermit. That's not the right word, but a a sad old street clown. <laughs> right. So a lot better than that. Found another meme. I gotta ask, because you know the scene where Obi Wan's fighting Vader, lifts all the rocks. Who would win, Kenobi with the high ground, or Kenobi with the ground high? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's good. That's good. good. I like good that. One. Yeah. Do you remember before Kenobi came out when everyone thought Jar Jar was gonna show up with like a beard? That was a no. leak that everyone was upset. That I saw that somewhere like months ago, where it was apparently leaked that Jar Jar was supposed to have a small cameo and he was gonna have a beard, and Obi Wan was just gonna kind of like disregard him and keep going with his adventure. Aw, <laughs> that would have been so <laughs> fucked up. No, I want a Jar Jar series, just because Jar Jar fuck all of these Star Wars fans who are angry about everything. <laughs> we should get a Jar Jar series that's just incredibly depressing. That's no. Here's what I want. I want a Jar Jar movie, but it's based off Joker. Where Jar Jar is just clinically like fucked in the head, and then at some point he goes, "You said get what you deserve," and then fucking shoot somebody in the head with a blaster. <laughs> no, he throws one of those Gungan like Boomba things. <laughs> Get what you fucking deserve. Boomba! <laughs> <laughs>
Oh my god, he's gonna kill someone <sighs> notable. He's gonna like drop Max Rebo or some shit. Yes. No. <laughs> Even though I love Max Rebo. Oh god. So if that's how Max Rebo died, I'd be perfectly okay with it. If he got shot in the head by Jar Jar Binks or had a one of those things thrown at him, I would be perfectly fine with it. That would be glorious. Oh god. Dude. <laughs> okay. So real quick, we both obviously cried at the Vader Obi Wan scene, obviously. Mm -hmm. It was the scene later when he sees Leia again and tells her about her mother and father. That mm -hmm. that one got to me. Oh, yeah. That one got to me. I got choked up a little bit. Like, I didn't cry, but it definitely choked me up. Like, damn, bro. Just seeing that Obi Wan could finally remember Anakin. Not Vader. Yeah. Anakin. Yeah. Then when she I think it's before that she looks up at him and she's like, You look tired or something like oh, that. That got me too. Uh, yeah. You that should go rough. to bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leia was awesome in that show, oh, I by the it. way. We just kind of skipped over her. I'm so glad she was an integral part of it, and it makes her calling to Obi-Wan for help make Obi a lot Obi -Wan more sense. Obi-Wan Kenobi? Now. God. Yeah. The weird complaint. If this breaks canon, she didn't know his name was Obi-Wan. It's like, dumb bitch, that's literally the only name she ever calls him. <laughs> right. What? Right. And I also really like, speaking of Obi-Wan interacting with them as Ben, I like... It was a theory that someone came up with that I can't remember his name, but like the fake Jedi. Uh, uh, K Kamal Nanjiani's character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to say his name because I don't know how to pronounce it, but yeah. Someone said that. Deal yeah, someone said dealing with him helped Obi Wan when he later interacted with Han Solo to um, understand how his personality worked, and that made him like kind of accepting of him, just willing to deal with him. Which is like, yes. Can I awesome. tell you this literal tweet that is on my screen right now? Go for it. Everything in A New Hope is better now. Even Obi-Wan meeting Han. Yes, he knows Han is full of it. That's clear. But now we can also gather that he sees Han's heart. He sees the right person, not just the right pilot. Lessons of intuition and trust he learned through Haja. That's his name, Haja. Haja, yeah, Haja. And uh, Nanjiani actually saw that tweet and quote tweeted it. Yes, and I love like, this. Yes, I love this. Yeah, yep. I'm pretty sure that was the exact tweet I was talking about. I'm almost positive. It's it just is. funny that that's exactly what I was looking at when you brought it up. <laughs> that's perfect. I love that. That that is incredible. And then, and ah, the other, my happiness oh, level, going? just with like the last six months of Disney. Getting Hayden Christensen, Ewan McGregor, Andrew Garfield, and Tobey Maguire all back. Mm -hmm. Just even if that was truly the last time we ever get it. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Happiness. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. I think we're going to see more of Hayden. I Part hope. of me thinks we're going to get a Vader series. I would hope be awesome. so. Just Only down if Jedi. they do it real. I want it yeah. to be R-rated. I know that yeah. sounds awful, but... We've read the comics. We know how mm -hmm. much of a monster Vader yeah. is. Do not dumb it down. Yeah. Disney's already doing stuff with R-rated uh, titles. Like they added all Deadpool the Netflix 3. series in, and it's confirmed that Deadpool 3 is going to be R-rated. So I think they would be more willing to do it. I, I, I think so. it's just going to take Filoni talking them up like, hey, listen, you know I know what I'm doing. Give me an R rating. Give me eight episodes, and I'll show you what Darth Vader's really like. Oh my you god! Know? Which would be fucking amazing. There's one comic scene that I need to see in it. There's actually a whole series that would be great, but mm -hmm. I don't know if Disney wants to go that route. And I'll tell you which one that is in a second. But the one scene, I can't even remember what planet it is or why Vader was there, but he is surrounded by multiple legions of rebel troops. And, you know, the commander's yelling out, it's over, Lord Vader. You're surrounded. And the response is all I'm surrounded by is fear and dead men. And he kills all of them. Like, I need that in live action just one time. I need right. to hear James Earl Jones hit me with the all I'm surrounded by is fear and dead yeah. men. 
You have no no clue how many times I've used that for like. There's a Star Wars version of D and D, so like a tabletop okay. role playing game that we play. My character has a weirdly similar story arc to Anakin's. It's not exactly the same, but it is weirdly similar. And yeah, I've a hundred percent used that line with that character and just murdered a bunch of people. It's awful. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, that it's cold as fuck. I hope they do so that. Good. Absolutely. Sign me up. But the entire story arc, they did one where Anakin was on Naboo in Padme's mausoleum tomb thing. Mm -hmm. And Sabe shows up. The handmaiden protector who looks exactly oh, okay. like Padme. Right. And like she's trying to figure out who killed Padme. So Vader and Sabe are working together to do some shit. Like, it's a whole thing. Like, that would be cool, whether it's for an episode or two or the whole series. That would just be sick. Right. That would be really cool. Yeah. I'm yeah. I either want that or I just want eight episodes of Vader hunting Jedi. Yeah. That would also be great. That would also be Because you can fantastic. get some cool cameos in there, you know? The different people he's hunting, you know, be sick. We can let all the people that think Mace Windu's alive have it for like two seconds, then have Vader finish the job. <laughs> no, we don't want to give Star Wars theory that win. Oh, is is he on that train, dude? He made an entire fan. Well, he was gonna make an entire fan film. Realized he didn't have enough money to do a whole film, so he was gonna make it a series. And then has only done like one episode in five years. Um, mm. But it was a Vader thing. And it was honestly kind of dope. And at the end, Vader's standing over this hole on Naboo. And down in the hole, you hear clones firing their weapons. They're, they all die. Vader's overlooking it. And you don't actually see a person. You just see a purple glow. Mm. You Like, you know it's Mace Windu. It's like, right. dude... I'm sorry, Mace Windu would clap Vader. <laughs> Windu clapped Palpatine, like, legitimately. Yeah. Vader, right now, is only a strong fighter because of how powerful he is on the dark side. Mace would just reverse that shit. No, no. Mace too good. He's slick I... with it. It's weird, oh. though. Mace couldn't beat Obi-Wan in a fight, but he could beat Anakin, 100%. He could beat Palpatine. Well, that... It goes down to like the uh, the way they fight, right? right. Like they're they're hundred percent. Obi Wan's all defense, well, and the other two are like full attacking. Well, it's more of the special fighting style Mace Windu has. Vapod allows him to take your dark side force energy that you are trying to project out and use it and force it back at you. He's attacking oh, you with okay. himself, and he has a special ability called Shatter Point. He can see the weakness in everything. So, that's super dope. But when he's fight, if he's fighting a Sith, Mace Windu does not lose. He just won't. Right. But if he's right. fighting, like if Anakin wasn't dark side, Anakin would probably beat him. But okay. that's not how that would ever go. Anakin always right. fought with emotion. That's how he does it. Right. So. Right. And that circles back to that scene how, emo like, you know, you see Anakin going full just anger and uh, arrogance and whatnot. And Obi-Wan's just kind of bouncing around, letting him do his thing. Yeah. And then just kind of fucks him over at the very end, which was fun. Yeah. The show was so good. So good. I loved it. Mm -hmm. There was one other character from that show that we haven't talked about. Um, and I can't remember his name, but he's played by Ice Cube's kid, Shea Jackson Jr., Oh, the resistance um, fuck, leader guy. Yeah. Uh, God damn it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know who cool. you're talking about. I, I liked, liked him. that character. I liked him a lot. I, I would love a show more. just about him and the path. That'd be sick. Could could pop up in Andor. I've seen a lot of people saying that. It's possible, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I would also like a full series just about him. Star Wars has so much potential for just series that they're never going to do because Star Wars. I, I, I still stand by the fact that the most important thing we need from Star Wars is you've 
seen the clips of like the old Republic game, not Knights of the Old Republic, but the old Republic, the MMO where they have the crazy, the best CGI I think anyone's ever made for these weird trailers for a game that looks nothing like those fucking trailers. Yeah. What you're talking about. I love that game. And those trailers are so we need old Republic stories. Isn't that what the new trilogy is supposed to be, or is that Nothing's like slightly confirmed modern? To be that. Oh, I thought it was. Okay. This nope. would just been a rumor I saw. Gotcha. Everybody's hoping oh. that either Taika or Ryan Johnson will do it. But you never know. Gotcha. Uh, there are also people hoping Feige will do it because he's getting to direct a movie for some reason. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, he's making a Star Wars movie. I don't know why, but he is. Listen, if they hate George Lucas's writing, imagine Star Wars with Marvel writing. Yeah. Dialogue, at least. Oh, people hate it. People hate it. <laughs> They're going to say I've got a bad feeling about this about 15 times in that movie. Oh, my God. Did we get and I have a bad feeling about this, no, Obi Wan? I don't know. I wasn't looking for it. No, I never looked for that. The only line anyone actually cared about was. When's he going to say hello there? You bastards. And he said it to Luke. At he said ver- it to Luke. It was the last scene of the show. Hello there. Well, not really. Meeting Qui-Gon Second was the last scene of the show. Which was done perfectly. I'm glad the Qui-Gon cameo was a cameo and he wasn't like a recurring character. Yeah. Because that would have ruined it. That would have completely ruined the novelty of it. Him showing up being like, it took you long enough. Come on, we got a long way to go. Was perfect. Yep. That was perfect Qui-Gon. That is the only reason I've even considered a season two. I don't think we need it, but I don't know. Some episodes of just Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon would be yeah. sick. Like yeah. Obi-Wan just being a hermit, but they're just talking about life. Like, mm-hmm. it's like maybe not even episodes, just like one episode, season two, mm-hmm. one episode, an hour long where they're just talking about everything. That'd be sick. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah. Maybe not even a season two, just call it like a special. Yeah, something. Obi-Wan, yeah, Obi-Wan Qui-Gon special or something. And yeah, I agree. The two of them just sitting down talking it out. It'd be yeah. great. Oh, It'd be 100%. absolutely fantastic. Uh, another great meme. So it's like The Mandalorian, eight episodes. Book of Boba Fett, seven episodes. Obi-Wan, six episodes. Shows the scene from Revenge of the Sith. R2, we need to be going up, not down. (laughs) (sighs) I can't wait for the new season. Oh, also, real quick, just because I was thinking about this with The Mandalorian, I'm so glad they didn't try to force Cal Ketsis into this show. Same. I don't know why people wanted that. Would have been so goofy. He has no place in Obi-Wan. No. I did love Mesa Windu's theory, though. Where? What was it? I probably missed it. (laughs) It wasn't even a theory. He was just like, this would be fucking hilarious. So somehow Yoda figures out that Reva is headed to Tatooine and he knows Obi-Wan's not there for some reason. So he goes, tells Owen and Beru to get Luke out of there, and he just hides in Luke's bed. So Reva goes to strike him down and just fucking Yoda pops out and beats her ass. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> that, that would have been so dumb, but so great. Yeah. <laughs> like, we don't need that, but I kind of wanted to see it ever. Yeah. Like I heard it and I was like, it's not going to happen, but I want to see it so bad. <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, I liked uh, Owen and Baru fighting back though. Have you seen all the jokes nice. about that now? No. How, like, in episode four, those weren't Owen and Baru's bodies. Those were the stormtroopers. They were just chilling oh. downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> it's I like, mean, that would be maybe. hilarious. <laughs> no, and then somebody was like, yeah, that weird old lady at the end of uh, Rise of Skywalker. That, that was Baru. <laughs> The, the sensors went off, and she went to go check what the fuck was happening. <laughs> it's like, I know it's not real, but that's so awesome. I mean, I don't know. But... Would it ruin it if they retconned it to that no, being the case? I don't think it would. would I think we... that would be amazing. Yeah. Like, you know, I mentioned earlier... Uh... X fighting on Endor, that wasn't the plan originally, but like they they wrote it in later on because right. of a show that came after. What if they do the same shit? 
right? I, I'm not against Maru, that. I mean, they just fought a Sith Inquisitor, bro. Like, yeah. they, you you tell me they couldn't take like ten stormtroopers? Come on, right? Come on. Come Granted, on. it was like what ten years after the fact. Yeah, well, maybe that's but their excuse. Still. They just got a little old. I don't know. I don't know either. I, I kind of want that now, though. I want them to retcon it. I want that to be a thing. <laughs> it, all for it. Would it would be so good. <laughs> I saw I... somewhere as well with Kenobi that in the original draft, Cody made an appearance. It was like a big part of the show. I will say I'm a little upset that didn't happen. Apparently, Cody was supposed to be his ally again. So I was <sighs> just reading this, like the actual article. Um, Obi-Wan, when he left Tatooine, was going to leave Cody in charge of protecting Luke. Which means I'm glad we didn't get to see it, because we would have watched Reva kill Cody. That's what would have happened. I would have been okay with that, though, because Cody would have died a hero. That's true. Would have redeemed himself. That's I would have been okay with it for the redemption aspect of That's it. That's valid. I would have preferred that, honestly. It's cool, like... As cool as Owen and Baru were, if it was Cody, fuck yeah. Right, that's fair. Yeah. And then he dies saving Luke, and then she's like, oh, never mind. <laughs> you, you can keep this one. <laughs> so, like, he redeems himself, but also Loki dies for nothing. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> oh, man. They take it a step further. Maybe Cody kills her. Could be. Nah, I don't, Could... I don't know. I kind of want to see more of Reba, so I, I don't know about that. I'm curious. I don't know what they can do with her, though. I don't know I don't what know. there is to really do with her. There's cause... all sorts of stuff you could, but it is one of those tough things where it's slotted in between already set points. So yeah. she can't become, like, too cool. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe she pops back up in the Vader show and that's who he finishes off. Instead of Windu, it's Reva. She comes Ooh. back after him as, like, a gray Jedi or whatever. Gray More Jedi powerful. aren't a thing, and... They can't I don't know be. how that shit works. So, okay. The idea of a gray Jedi makes no sense. Okay. It, to people, it's just supposed to be, like, I don't know, a light side user who's not a Jedi. So they're just a light side user, bro. Like, okay. they don't need to be called a Jedi. And then the people who, no, they're a Jedi who use the light and the dark. Mm, that's not possible. The dark corrupts. If you start right. using it, you would just become a dark side user, which also okay, doesn't okay. make you a Sith. Star Wars fans are weird. Yeah. The arguments I've had, I've seen on the internet bug me. But like, like the Inquisitors break canon. What about the rule of two? They're not Sith. There's a master hmm. and an apprentice. And then like 10 people with lightsabers who go murder Jedi. Like mm -hmm. it's fine. Is sure. our Vader or Palpatine really worried about any of those ten people? No. Right. They're ants. Like, and we saw that. Yeah. We saw a prime <laughs> example of that. Oh, my God. The Grand Inquisitor's return. That hello <laughs> might just be as iconic as hello there. Hello. Uh, <laughs> I wish they would have done more. Was it the fifth brother? There yeah. was the other Inquisitor running around. He was awesome. Yeah. I wish they would have done more with him. Yeah. Other than him just kind of being like petty towards Reva being like, you're never going to be the Grand Inquisitor. And she's like, I'll show you. And then does it and then gets fucked over. Like, oh, I, I mean, she would have had a bigger role it. than that. Yeah. I mean, she didn't get to be Grand Inquisitor. Yeah, I was going to say, I was gonna say Vader, was, that was, Vader was 10 steps ahead the whole time. Mm-hmm. Which was, which is always good to see. Yeah. It's always good to see. That show, beyond just being like cool Obi Wan story, really cemented, I think, how fucking insane Vader is to people who might not have understood. Vader's yeah. a monster. Yeah, like I've been watching um, the boys recently. I know I brought that up to you before right before i started it but like homelander is this insane like, overpowered villain and shit and all i can think about when watching that show or watching like invincible with omni man or anything else that has a really overpowered villain is damn that's pretty cool but darth vader would kick his ass <laughs> dude a, vader is just 
this show might officially <clears throat> give him, at least in most people's minds, finally the credit of being the greatest villain ever instead of yes. Heath Ledger's Joker. Like, I get it. Heath Ledger's Joker is crazy. But Vader's a m literal monster. Like, mm -hmm. it's funny. I, I saw a thing the other day talking about the three villains in the prequels and, like, how they all kind of are what Anakin is, like a piece of him. So, like, Darth Maul is the pure rage, right? Right. Grievous is obviously the cyborg, but Dooku <laughs> is the fallen Jedi aspect. And it's like, <laughs> who the fuck sat down and was like... <laughs> Are you good, guy? <laughs> Hold on, listen. I love how Maul and Dooku have like these legitimate arguments. And the Grievous is just like he a robot. cyborg. <laughs> he robot. He robot. <laughs> that was the legit argument, though. That's what I saw. I didn't come up with this. Don't come at me, internet. I know. I know. <laughs> Oh my god, like robot. legitimate personality traits of Anakin Skywalker than robot. Robot. <laughs> is there any other way you can twist that? I don't I even think, think there is. Okay, so Grievous was once a the greatest warrior of his yeah. species. Mm -hmm. Some may argue Anakin was the greatest warrior in the Jedi who okay. got manipulated by the Sith and turned into a cyborg. Oh. <laughs> I guess if you want, okay, so if you want to go with like he has that, you could also argue partially that uh, uh, Dooku has like the arrogance as well. I guess that's another other aspect you'd go with it because I'm trying but to also think. Same with Grievous and Maul. That's just a yeah. sick aspect. Or true, just a... true, true. Actually, no, arrogance is just an everything aspect. I mean, look at Yoda. Mm hmm. Or Windu, for that matter. Yeah. But I was thinking more Yoda because I must go face the Chancellor alone. Oh, yeah. If okay, you go yeah, with yeah. Obi-Wan, you win. Yeah. Like, dumbass, what the fuck it's are you doing? fucking sacrificing Kit Fit. Or no, never mind. I was thinking of Windu for a moment. Yeah. Well, Windu sacrificed three people. Yeah, because, but Kit Fisto oh, was the only one that mattered. That's I don't well, care about the I love Kit Fisto. And Kit Fisto, right. I like to lean... Like, when thinking about that scene, I try not to just use what, like, we got on screen. Because the Revenge of the Sith novelization kind of does a better job describing what's going on that you couldn't really have done in live action. Because, you know, mm -hmm. Ian McDermott is, like, a thousand years old. Samuel L. Jackson's, like, 95. Like, mm -hmm. how good can their choreography be? But it was, like... Sazy Tin and Egg and Kolarth, they did just die. They never moved. They never blinked. They just dead. Mm -hmm. But the way it was described in the novelization is it was still a very brief period of time. But as Anakin was flying in, he saw red, purple, and green moving faster than the eye could track. And suddenly the green disappeared. Like, and from Kit Fisto's perspective, like, he was, he thought at least he was keeping up. And suddenly he was severed. Like, right. he didn't even know it happened. That's how fast Palpatine and Windu were moving. So, like, mm -hmm. Kit Fisto was the third best duelist there. But it's also, to me, one of those things, like, how could you not take Anakin with you to confront Palpatine? Mm -hmm. That was arrogance again, but yeah. like, I don't know. It's weird. Like, isn't that another star Wars theory video where it was like, Anakin, Obi-Wan and Windu confront Palpatine or something. Anakin, like that? Obi-Wan, Windu and Yoda. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, Yoda went with him too. Okay. There was and also Palpatine's done so. Oh Yeah. <laughs> the best Star Wars theory video I've ever seen. It's actually really good. I might send it to you later. It's about, like, what if Anakin had rejoined Obi-Wan on Mustafar? Something titled like that. 
Right. So Obi-Wan doesn't go to Mustafar. It's just Anakin and Padme. And Padme does start to reel him back in. She takes off, like, running away from him. He follows her to Naboo. And the scene that he was talking about, Anakin goes to reflect, standing in the same spot he did in episode two when thinking of his mother. And that's when you get the, what have I done? And he goes back to his ship, contacts Obi-Wan. They have a little argument, but Obi-Wan or Anakin says, no, I need to end this. So he goes and joins Obi-Wan and Yoda to fight Palpatine. And like, <clears throat> it's very weird and very sad, but like Anakin, his use of the dark side and the light in the moment made him the strongest being to ever exist. Uh, like he basically was perceiving time like the flash can like he was moving full speed everything else just stops right because he got force pushed away palpatine's about to kill obi-wan but in the blink of an eye anakin's back kills palpatine but the move palpatine was doing to kill obi-wan kills anakin <sighs> but anakin dies the hero right like it's like damn that's it's it's way more in depth than his video obviously because i'm not trying mm -hmm. to sit here for 40 mm -hmm. minutes to go over it right, right but like right. oh <laughs> it's like sometimes star wars theory makes great videos other times he's just yelling right. about nothing mm -hmm. oh that is great but I hate myself because the first thing that came to mind is when you said he was in the same spot as he was in episode two. I can just see George Lucas writing, man, it's become worse than the sand I hate. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, God. I've become one with the sand, Padme. I must become contact with... Obi-Wan. I must sacrifice myself. <laughs> Bury me in the sand. <laughs> Imagine. Oh god. It's like Obi Wan after he dies, we must take him to to, to, Tatooine. to Tatooine to bury him. Well, bury him next bury to his mother. His... Okay, I, I right, can right, see right. It. No, no, no. He's buried in the sand. Padme shows up. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? He you hates sand. Oh. <laughs> no, she arrives and says the exact line. What the fuck are you doing? He doesn't he like hates, sand, it's coarse, doesn't, it's rough, yeah. and it gets everywhere! And then she becomes Darth Vader after cutting down Obi-Wan. <laughs> that would be... What the fuck did we just do? <laughs> we created the perfect timeline, that's what we just did. No, we didn't. The perfect timeline. The one where Anakin never turns dark, raises Luke and Leia at the temple, and is Grand Master of the Jedi Order, and brings peace freedom, justice, and security to his new empire. I mean, Republic. Yeah, right, sorry. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, speaking of the perfect ending, I'm not one to cry over, like, fan art or, like, hypothetical fan art, but I can remember vividly seeing one time a picture, and it was Anakin and Padme, and, like, Anakin was playing in the sand with Luke or something, Padme was sitting there, and then in the distance you can see Ahsoka and Leia playing. Obi-Wan's chilling in the back, just kind of like with his arms folded, watching over them with a smile, and it broke me. It was the saddest thing I've ever seen. Imagine. Yeah. Imagine. Oh, hey, I imagine. found that stupid comic panel. Here, you can see oh. the actual panel. Okay. Yeah, like, that oh. broke me. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. So cool. Vader That's is so awesome. hard. He is, he's such a cool so metal. character. Yeah, literally. God damn it. <laughs> he's literally metal. Oh my god. Are, do you follow... Oh god, what is her name? Gingers are plants? Do not. She goes by Bucky. I've never heard... I've never heard of this person. I feel like maybe you have, and you just, like, don't know the 
they're at maybe basically maybe ah uh, volume on my phone's on apparently <laughs> oh that's fun yeah you Con brisker's been working out with aaron donald completely random nice that's fun that is fun sometimes oh. who am i looking for oh right no she does like so her biggest thing for a long time she was talking about like all I ever want to see is, like, Luke and Ahsoka meet each other and be talking. And then it mm -hmm. happened in The Mandalorian, and she's like, oh, my God, I can predict the future. But she's been doing this thing where she would, like, force ghost Anakin talking to Leia and Luke. We need a whole series just about that because it's hilarious. You know? Yeah. Obi-Wan yeah. said Vader killed my father. Well... Yeah, no, I mean, from a certain point of view, and actually, she she was like, from a Obi Wan said, from a certain point of view, and Anakin was like, no, that's literally what I told you. Like, <laughs> these were literally the words out of my mouth, <laughs> and then goes on to like <laughs> talk about how he lost all of his limbs, and Luke's like, what? You lost all of your limbs? I thought it was just the one. No, no. Why do you think I was in the suit? I don't know, because it looked cool? <laughs> no. Obi-Wan, did you not tell him what happened? We don't need to talk about this right now. <laughs> and Lu she just has Luke going, Obi-Wan, is there something <laughs> I need to know? And then getting into the whole, I may have cut off all of his arms and burned him alive <laughs> and just the, like it's one of those things like i know we'll never get it but it would be fucking hilarious mm -hmm. oh my god yeah. you know what i want an old man luke series that would be great like just of his time on octu or just before he gets there so you can get all of the force ghosts all the cool conversations find and out then... why the fuck he started milking elephant creature things because well, blue milk well that was green milk but it's the best you can get you're not on tatooine there's i think it's bantha milk so there are no banthas he had to find something else to milk right right why didn't we he take an a episode bantha? of trial and error listen give me an episode of trial and error with that he's just milking everything <laughs> in sight and trying it full 60 minute <sighs> episode of just that that's how we start a riot of Star Wars fans <laughs> trying to murder everything. It would be the perfect fuck you to Star Wars fans and, like, the perfect meme for people like us. Oh, I love it. I do, though. Like, I, I know it's Goofy being like, oh, I want Luke to meet everyone that knew Anakin, but, like, I desperately want to see Luke talk to Rex. Yeah. Pretty badly. I want Luke, Rex, Ahsoka, and Leia in the same room, just go i want to oh see my it. god maybe star wars should start doing that just like hour-long specials of different characters having conversations right? about like, everything going they on they are canon conversations but they're like you know they happened sometime it doesn't exactly, really matter because like you said the timeline's getting very crowded right like, like an hour-long conversation within the grand scheme of things isn't too much to assume. So you, you know, we have Obi Wan and Qui Gon. You have Ahsoka, Rex, and the kids. Yep. Um, do like Leia and Rey would be a great one. Yep. Do Anakin's forced ghost in Fuck, even uh, Kylo and Rey. Yeah, because we know somehow that that one still doesn't make sense to me. I don't know how Kylo became a, a forced ghost, but he did just fade away. Which means he turned into a force ghost, even though we never saw it. He is one, and I don't know how. I was just getting ready to say Anakin's force ghost and Kylo. <laughs> that would be that's sick. Like how and Ky Luke. Yeah, Kylo Get Luke in there, too. You know what this little <laughs> bastard did? Dad! <laughs> Dad, oh. Kylo tried to turn to the dark side to continue your legacy or some bullshit. <laughs> dad kylo's trying to continue oh my god yeah that would be great <laughs> uh, genuinely speaking though like unironically i think that would be a fantastic star wars series mostly I like just you want... said oh sorry go ahead i was just gonna say like you said the timeline is extremely crowded so just a bunch of those like you know they're doing that series coming up where it's like animated tales of the jedi or yeah. whatever 
do something like that make it an anthology series do like 10 of them make them span across the timeline with a bunch of different characters i want some of them to happen quickly mostly because i want the last thing on my i want to see it before i die list is hayden christensen and mark hamill on screen together yeah not animated versions just them okay yeah I want you Force Ghost Hayden Christensen to be talking to Mark Hamill. That is the one thing I need. It's the one. It's the last bit of Star Wars. They wouldn't I need. be able to do just the two of them though. They'd have to throw someone else in. So maybe like the two of them and Ray. But they could just do the two of them though. I, I, they could, but I don't think they would. No, but like, well, you could just have it be entirely like all the Force Ghosts. That'd be cool. But yeah, a the, Force Ghost Roundtable, right? Like Qui Gon, Yoda. Obi Wan, Anakin. Mm-hmm. Those are the only ones we need. Anakin the whole time. Yes, yes. Fuck it. Get Rex and Ahsoka in there too. I. My biggest thing with Leia is I don't know how you do that. Well. Yeah. So. Maybe it is just I don't know. I don't know what it is, but that's it's... why I'm thinking for Leia. You do it animated, so you can yeah. just cast a voice actress the... to. Yeah. The only one I need in live action is Hayden is, and Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone I'm all else. For that. But my thing is, if we're animating it with Ahsoka, do not go Rosario Dawson, please. No, you got to get me Ashley, Ashley back in. Who's like the sweetest human in the world. Oh I love God. her so much. Yeah. And that clip from Star Wars Celebration when she first mm-hmm. met Hayden Christensen. Mm-hmm. Oh. How's it going, Sky Guy? Oh. Yeah. So happy. I saw another clip too from from that Star Wars celebration where she was like signing autographs and this guy was trying like she he was having a full on conversation with her while she was signing other people's autographs and she just seems like such a sweet and genuine human right she really does oh so good but I agree with that I agree with that 100 percent and then <clears throat> yeah just do like a Clone Wars one you know get like the whole gang back together as in like. Uh, James Arnold Taylor, Matt Lanter, Ashley, D. Bradley Baker. Yep. Just do, and then, yeah, I think that would be enough. Just do the three of them and and Rex and Cody. Fives and fives can just be like, oh, I god. fucking told you. Oh I my fucking god! Fucking told you. No, but fives didn't die for nothing. Yeah. I mean, without fives, they don't know to remove Rex's inhibitor chip. Without five, mm-hmm. Ahsoka dies. Yeah. Rex turns evil. Like, fives may not have saved the Jedi and the Republic, but I mean, saved in a way, he saved, like, Rex. he saved a lot That's of stuff. That's enough for me. Right? Yeah. Oh, I got to send you one more tweet because it's hilarious. <laughs> All right. Something I was going to bring up earlier, too, when you mentioned the, uh, what, what what's the, the brother and sister arc? What's it called? Morbius? I almost said Morbius. No, the Mortis. The Mortis. <laughs> Mortis. <laughs> Who's called it the Morbius? It's Morbin arc. time. <laughs> no, um, the Domino Squad in the Umbara arc are probably my favorites from um, Clone Wars. I just, like I said, I just love the clones, Fair. and Umbara is great. None of us <laughs> look back on and regret the things That's we great. did by. <laughs> true. Great. True. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the Umbara arc with uh, and Rex is like struggling with killing fuckhead. What's his name? Pongkrell. The four, yeah, the four armed bitches I like to call them. And Rex is like struggling with killing them, and then oh my god, I'm terrible with names right now. Who's the? Is it Dogma that kills him? I think so. I think it's dogma that that yeah because dogma was like the kiss ass and at the very end he's like oh well you know i'll do the right thing here and just pops one in them and the sacrifices that happen during that it's such such a good arc and like the the battle where they're fighting the clones are fighting each other and they i think it is rex that it's like rex runs that down and like, it. stop stop yeah it's so good it's so well written and then the domino squad is fantastic every single one of them is just such a lovable character and i'm so glad echo's still alive right 
I'm so glad. He's he's my favorite member of the Bad Batch by far. I love the Bad Batch, but he's my favorite yeah. member, even though he's like the the honorary member, so to speak. Um. So this this is this is just sad because I don't know if this footage still exists anywhere. Mm -hmm. The original cut of Revenge of the Sith was over four hours long. Holy shit! Give me the, the extended Lucas cut. cut. The no, Lucas it cut. It was the Lucas cut the first time, so it's just gonna be. Oh no! You gotta title it like they're doing uh, No Way Home again, because they're gonna re-release it in theaters with more yeah, clips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The more what fun the, version. The more Revenge fun of the version, Sith. Yeah. The more fun version. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> more that actually younglings. might be the more sadness version because like if they keep yeah. in the padme obi-wan like oh, they will suppose it are that they will like that might be too sad yeah also do they so keep bad. all five deleted scenes where shock t dies like which one yes which one is her death or does she just keep like them. showing up for some reason I want somebody as a side character, if that's how they went about it. I want somebody to be like, bitch, we saw you die. How are you here? <laughs> like a director's commentary almost. <laughs> Just unbuilt different dies again. <laughs> uh, the only line we ever actually get from Shock T is just, I'm just built different. <laughs> uh, she really has like died a hundred times, but mm -hmm. none of them are canon. We have no clue what actually happens. She just dies somehow a billion times. What if, uh, they should write it to where she's like, she has like four identical siblings. So they're just all different characters. They're all canon. They're all canon. Oh no. There were just five Shaktis running around the temple and nobody knew which one was which because they were all this, all different people but looked and they're acted the twins, exact same. They're all twins so they do look just exactly the same. Oh mm -hmm. no. That's awesome. Yeah. Also, something I didn't talk about with Kenobi, the scene where he finds the clone that's just like sitting there. I oh. cried during that. That broke my heart. That hit hard. It bugged me. It was me. a five oh first trooper yeah. too. Yeah. Made it even worse. Those are my boys. And I mean, the way he looked at him, I feel like he recognized Obi Wan. Yeah, he did. He had to have. There's no way. There is no way he did not. There is absolutely no way. I, I I would find it very hard to believe that he didn't recognize Obi Wan after all the battles they fought together. Right. I would love to find out that was like an actual clone that mattered and not just some random five hundred first Appa. member. It was Appa. <laughs> Hello, Appa. Or they could uh they could oh. uh they could like retcon Kicks' storyline where he doesn't become a pirate eighty years in the future. He's just. That'd be so sad. Never mind. I don't want that to happen. <laughs> That'd be so sad. Never mind. No. So, two things. That I I need to wrap this up soon, but it's fine. Two <laughs> things. Uh, Obi Wan, or not Obi Wan? Jesus fuck. I so I've seen a bunch of tweets lately talking about how Disney made Star Wars less <laughs> violent. That's a lie. The tweet reply to it with all of the, you know people being literally cut to bits like do, do we not remember the throne room fight in the right. last jedi where right. like heads came flying off some dude got thrown into a wood chipper the best yeah. way i know how to describe it you literally see him go poof. <laughs> mm -hmm. like what that they made it more violent <laughs> what are you on <laughs> but yeah like Clone Wars season seven, even though it's animated, like the shit Darth Maul does in right? the hallway. Which, by the way, is like the best Darth Maul scene. Fucking, oh, I don't care about the death. I don't care about anything else. Duel of the Fates, eat your heart out. That is the best Darth Maul scene. That is peak Darth Maul. No, peak so Darth Maul is him wandering through the desert like a madman, and okay. then just. You're right. You're right. Him. Oh, it's the runner-up. I, I saw a tweet that was like. So Sam Witwer is credited on Kenobi. I don't know what he did, but somebody he was like, "He had to have Kenobi." No, or he had Obi -Wan, to have taught whatever Hay it is he said. He yeah. had to have taught Hayden Christensen how to do it. 
Like, not this yeah. is how you yell at Kenobi, motherfucker. And I mm-hmm. love the cut I've seen people do where they've cut them together because Maul only says Kenobi and Anakin yells Obi-Wan. So they yeah. cut them together. <laughs> Obi-Wan. Kenobi. <laughs> so good. That should have been the intro for the show. Oh, my God. If they do a season two, that should be the intro for every single episode. It's just that, and then you cut to some intense ass music made by John Williams. John like Williams re- is apparently retired. He's done. Or about to? Re- is he retired? I thought he was about to retire. I think he's done. Damn. Which is tough. It sucks. It sucks. It does. But very unfortunate. It is what hey. probably was best. Since you said you want to wrap it up, I, w- I got one more question for you. I'm going to ask right, you one go. thing. So you you know the joke of, like, Glup Shitto? Yep, it's just, yep, like, yep, random yep. back... Who's your favorite Glup Shitto character? That's tough. That's tough. It's tough. I got two. I know mine okay, off the go top ahead. of my head. Go ahead. So Max Rebo, like I said earlier, if you even want to consider him in that category. Okay. And I'm basic, but fucking Claude. The, I, I just love Claude. His existence is why I get up in the morning. You sure about that? Yes. Uh, I mean, Claude is hilarious. His existence is amazing. <laughs> Maybe it's the... Uh, I don't know. I've got your really Fuck it. taken it's on funny. this one. It's funny. I mean... You could go Porkins, because it's funny. Yeah. Um, huh. well, I think Love Shadow. I think a goofy-looking alien. I'm not thinking... That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I'm just... Oh, you're right. You're Porkins right. I'm is just, just a for funny me personally. name. Yeah. Um, so, I mean... But you're... That's valid. No. Uh, God damn it. What's his name? The weird... Oh, God. I gotta. I gotta try to figure it out. No. Um no, no, that's that's not it. That's not the best way to Google it. That just made Chewbacca pop up. No, that's still not correct. No, the fuck the, are you looking up the to get weird Chewbacca? Jedi. He's like s- super hairy. All of his hair is just pure white. What the fuck was his name? You, you, I literally do not if have I a clue. Figure out who it is. I will send you the picture because you have seen him. Hold on. Let me try to look this up with I, you. I think he was a council member. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, Coleman Trebber is always going to be on the list. <laughs> he did one thing one time. Uh, <laughs> but no. Um, oh, no, that's something different. Fall of the Republic. Can you just give me some names? Okay. I mean, I'm getting Moof Talk. No, Oppo Rancisis. Rancisis. Oppo Rancisis? Yes. Here, I will send you the link to his Wikipedia page. Oh, so no, I'm looking see. him up. Okay. Oppo. Oh, that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But when you look up Harry Jedi from Star Wars, it still brings up Chewbacca for some fucking reason. I looked up. Oh, <sighs> he's like a fucking serpent? Yeah, dude, he's weird. Okay. Interesting. He's in Lego? <laughs> I mean, Tara Sanube can probably go on that list. Tara uh, Sanube? I don't know what that is. She was, uh... She. He oh, was the, the old yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah the old... The he was old... an Obi-Wan. Yeah. He topped up in the tank in Obi Wan. Yeah. yeah, is that a tank? I thought it was more of a, like a, ember. Yeah, yeah. It's, like... it's more like a tomb, so yeah. to speak. I just called it a tank because it looked like a tank. The yeah, best... it's more like a tomb. No, the best Glup Shadow in Star Wars is the youngling who was in the amber stuff <laughs> on Obi Wan. Oh my god. The guy everyone thought was Mace Windu because they're too dumb to realize his right hand got cut off but the dude yeah. in the thing had a right hand. Mm-hmm. I don't think Disney would miss on that one. I don't yeah. think they'd miss that detail. And also, if if 
because there's the weird, well, that one could have been Quinlan. Well, that one could have been Mace Windu. If Obi-Wan would have seen a Jedi that he actually knew and gave a fuck about, he's not just going to look and walk past. Yeah, we would have gotten a, a little And little it would have focused on that character. Yeah, like yeah, when yeah. he stopped and stared at Tara Sanube. Yeah. 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 I'm still trying to think of what would have been the goofiest character to see in there, or just like the one that would have pissed off fans the most. I guess... Uh, oh Windu my God. probably would have pissed everyone off the most. No, piss off all the Legends fans. Have a, uh, have a, uh, the guy who turns into Darth Crate. What the fuck is his name? He's a, uh, he's a Sand People Jedi. That's what he was before oh, he turned into yeah. Darth Crate. What the fuck is his name? But no, Jessica? have him. No. Jaska Ducato? No, Asherod Hett. As... Just okay. have Asherod Hett pop up. And have <laughs> Anakin just fucking murder him. <laughs> so that way people can, like, stop with the idea that Crate will ever exist. He just gets cut into bits. I don't know why they don't do that more. Just like, no, this theory of yours can never happen. Here's why. <laughs> Disney really should do that more. Like, people, you know, just to piss them off even more, Sloney really should say fuck you to people like that right? and just do the, like, give people the small, like, he should have a flashback where Darth Revan just gets fucking brutalized. Oh, my God. <laughs> that like, Darth Revan pops hilarious. up for two seconds and just gets, like, stomped on by some giant I ass don't... fucking animal. I don't know. That might actually cause a war if, like, Darth <laughs> Revan appears in media and is just a little bitch. But it would be so good. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, give me Darth Revan and have him just get murdered by Nihilus. Just for fun. I, I've always liked Darth Nihilus more. His character is more intriguing. Revan's I'm just like Anakin. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yet yeah, Darth Nihilus is the guy who yeah, got hit got by it. a super weapon, became like a void who just had to consume force en energy, got so right. powerful he could consume like all of the life on a planet. Right. But like no longer had a body, technically never died. His soul is still stuck to his mask. He's just so depowered that he can't do anything. Jesus. So... I actually ran a Star Wars, like the Star Wars version of D and D. I ran a game where the characters were Sith apprentices in the Old Republic on Korriban. They found <sighs> Nihilus's tomb. Somebody fucked up and put his mask on and unleashed Nihilus back oh, onto shit. the galaxy. It was so yeah. sick, <laughs> but it's like because it could happen technically. Well. Right. I don't know what new, I don't know what canon is going to say, but like with the, with the legend story, technically Nihilus could just pop up just for fun, nice. which I would love to see. Nice. Fuck it. Dave, I give you permission. Fuck over Darth Nihilus. Let him show up for like a day. Some Jedi found his mask, put it on and Yoda cuts him in half. It just ends it. And I think I got the answer to my question. It's a basic answer, but the perfect character to have in one of those teams would have been Jar Jar. Yeah. That would have been perfect. I think that would have both pissed everybody. Like, it would have pissed off the crowd that wanted a real cameo because they're like, really? We got fucking Jar Jar? And then <laughs> you give the other people who wanted Jar Jar to come back and they're like, really? This is how you bring back Jar Jar? Right. And then me and you were on the sideline like, ha. This buddy's <laughs> <Jar -Jar>. dead. <laughs> <laughs> Jar Jar's fucking dead. Yeah, like that would have been perfect. I only I... want Jar Jar back if it's a mod best. Yeah. Or animated, obviously. Yeah. My brain stopped for a minute and I thought you said Javid best, and I was like, why would Javid best play Jar Jar? <laughs> Dude, I got the two confused for so long. Like literally six months ago I had to look it up. I was like Dude, did the guy who played Jar Jar play running back in the NFL? I'm so confused because I thought they were the same dude for some reason. I had to like yeah. actually Google it and be like, oh, I was wrong. Okay, cool. Yeah. At least yeah, I, I never like was... said that on the internet at the time when I actually thought it. Like, dude, Jar Jar like was a running back in the NFL. Like, dude's I just an athlete. Make, like a whole TikTok about it. 
Oh, oh my, my god. god. I should just for the meme right now just be like, yo, did anybody else know that Jar Jar played in the NFL? <laughs> he was a running back for the Lions, bro. Just start pushing random Star Wars NFL agendas. Like, did you know this uh, background character in Star Wars was actually played by Jerry Rice? It's like Max Rebo. <laughs> just make a bunch of shit up. It's like, did you know each of the Ewoks was actually played by the 1982 Dallas Cowboys offensive line? <laughs> <laughs> Did you know the youngling that Anakin slaughters in Revenge of the Sith is actually Tom Brady? No, is actually Tom Brady's son. <laughs> no, you no, it's actually Tom Brady, which oh, makes it even all right. worse. All right, you know what? I'm doing it. Tom I'm going like... to do a bunch of these stupid fucking videos. <laughs> oh, God. I got to give you one more. I got to give you one okay. more. Um <laughs> Did you know Lawrence Taylor was initially meant to be a Tuscan Raider, but was dropped from the movie due to doing cocaine on set? <laughs> that one feels a bit more believable. Honestly, because it, it was actually does. cut from the movie. No, no, no. I got it. No, oh, no. I don't. We, oh, go ahead. No, I didn't have it. I, we need okay. a current NFL player who's doing okay. cocaine all the all the time. Because I was going to be like, no, they had originally cast Aaron Donald to play Asherod Het, but they cut him because whatever. And it's like, no, we need somebody funny. The cast, oh my God, they cast Henry Ruggs to play Asherod Het. <laughs> No, it's got to be more random than that. Do you like fucking Byron Pringle, but he was dropped because of his stupid arrest? No. Oh, my God. They cast. Oh, my God. That's so funny. Brett Favre was supposed to join Star Wars before he became back out of retirement. <laughs> oh, my God. They cast Brett Favre as Darth Revan. Before, <laughs> after he retired from the Packers, but they scrapped the movie when he returned to go play for the Jets. Because I just and want just people gotta... to be pissed off about Revan being like the <laughs> Southern boy, you know? And you gotta like doctor some articles and some tweets. Yes, there's there's generators where you can do oh, that I'm shit. Do I don't it. think it's too I, hard. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some fucking really stupid stuff. According to this article, should Brett I have Favre one that's like the Brett Favre one? Should I have it be posted by the official Star Wars Twitter account? Make the fake tweet from the official Star Wars Twitter account? Absolutely. Oh my god, that's gonna get me canceled so fast. I'll get you canceled. No, that's actually, it'll funny. be more like in the future when I'm trying to be make a serious take. People will be this like, "No, nah, this is the guy who lied about this weird shit, bro." It was funny. <laughs> Right. No, that would be my answer, bro. If you watched my podcast, you knew this was all pre-planned. Yeah. I suppose we're spoiling this for anyone who watches the podcast. It's fine. Podcast won't be out for a week. I'll post one by then. So there then everybody's go. confused for like a couple of days. And then anybody who watches the show won't be. And anybody who doesn't right. will be. It'll be great. But I am Give officially a inside late. joke. So. Oh, shit. <laughs> We're Apologies. good. Apologies. But no, you're good. I, it's probably a good thing that we had like a true set limit because we would be here for another four hours. Absolutely. We can just talk. It's great. But uh, thanks a ton for coming on. Everybody go follow at Miller Football everywhere. Anything else you want to say? Um, If you're an NFL fan, which first of all, shout out to you for sitting through what a two hour long Star Wars conversation. <laughs> And second of all, if you have a favorite team, I'm doing a team preview series over on TikTok and YouTube uh, under the Ball Knower podcast. Make sure you check it out. We've got the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, I guess I can't really say what's coming out because you don't know when you're uploading this. But like Fair. as of right now, as of July 1st, I've uploaded the entire NFC North. We're about to do the AFC North. We're going to do everything, get to it before the kickoff of the season. Probably going to leak into the preseason a little bit, but uh, please check that out. Got a lot of fun guests and whatnot, so Please it's do. fun. It's a great it's time. Best. Don't watch the Vikings episode because we derailed about a billion times talking about other teams. I've done that <laughs> in a lot of episodes, though. Oh, have like you? yesterday, we were doing the Bears episode and we spent like 15 minutes talking about Christian Watson. So. Oh, that'll happen. <laughs> yeah. 
See, but that one actually makes sense. It was rumored forever that the Bears were going to go get him. So, like, yeah, I well, get I mean, it. We were talking about former Vikings, right? Most of the time? Or, like, people in mm. the division? Kind of. Some of the time, yeah. I don't I know. just remember we Patterson. That, that's the big one oh, I remember. That one yeah. we did go way off track for. But mm-hmm. it's valid. Got to yeah. gotta hype up the greatest kick returner of all time. Chicago d- Bears legend Cordero Patterson. I do put that. I, you got to say kick returner because mm-hmm. there is no one guy who is the greatest all around. It's just Cordero Patterson was the best at kicks. Devin Hester was the best at punts. That's it. That's the tweet. Yeah. Nathan Vasher's the best at missed field goals. No, no. That's uh, Gary Anderson. Thank you. 1998? Gary Anderson returned a a field goal? No. Oh, you said returning field goals. I definitely heard missing field goals. Uh, Yeah, I I might have misworded it, but I meant missed field goal returns. Ah. Because Nathan Vasher had like a 103-yard return or something off missed field goal. Isn't it Jamal Agnew? Didn't he do that to the Broncos this year? Maybe. He returned oh, no, something that might not have been a missed I don't keep goal. up with the Agnew lore, unfortunately, so I'm not sure. But it's also, who the fuck was watching the Jaguars? So, you know. Right. Unless you truly were just watching the dumpster fire that is Urban Meyer's offense. But, like I said, I'm already late. Yeah, in the so, episode, damn it. We need to wrap this up. Thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Holy